Last weekend, the on-call technician uh, got a service call that all their exhaust fans were down. And uh, when he came out here, he found that to be true. All the exhaust fans were down. He opened up the motor starter cabinet. I'll open it up here real quick. All right, and what he found was that this motor starter right here, notice that it's stuck in the middle position. The motor starter, which is a overload protector, wouldn't let the motor turn on. It wasn't letting the right voltage through and it was just creating problems. And then it blew the fuses, which are the control voltage fuses that power the transformer. So this first one right here also powers that transformer. So that's why everything shut down. So we diagnosed it as a bad motor starter, but we didn't have one. That's a 24 volt motor starter. All we had was a 120 volt motor starter. So I came out, we temporarily wired in a 120 volt motor starter that is no longer being controlled by the hood switches for that fan right there. And today I've got the right motor starter. So we're gonna turn this system off. All the exhaust fans just shut down, make a pair shut down. We're gonna get this temporary starter pulled out. We're gonna get this one replaced and then we're gonna fix a few other issues. All right, we're gonna verify that we've lost power completely. We have no power. But we still have power to the bottom of the contactor or of the safety switch. This guy right here, okay? So power shut off. We're good to continue with our replacement of this starter. And there's some other funky things going on with this thing too. So what I'm capable of doing because the overload is the right size. So I'm just going to take the contactor out and we have a new 24 volt contactor. So that'll work. So we're gonna go ahead and leave the existing one where it is just for now. We'll go ahead and get the new one put in here and then we'll finish it up. So on the, these contactors, these overload or motor starters, there's a little pull tab usually on the bottom right here, this guy. These ones don't have it because these ones you can just pull down on them. They're like spring active. So I didn't feel comfortable because this is a really old system just bypassing the motor starters. I wasn't comfortable with that because it was in really bad shape. So that's why we put in a temporary one. It's a good practice anyway. It really shouldn't be bypassing things like that. Okay. These guys just kind of go together. They're meant to couple together. To create a motor starter. So all that it is, is a contactor with an overload and a uh, normally closed contact on it. And the normally closed contact creates a holding circuit that uh, locks it shut if it trips. So on these, you just put the top in, pull down, and it's locked in. Okay, so now, Down there. 
Okay, so uh, I already kind of see the, I talked to the kitchen manager. Yesterday they called saying that the, the walk-in freezer was at 20 degrees and the fans weren't running. Then Joe called them and they said the fans were running and it seemed like it was coming down to temp. I got there this morning. The ice cream is firm, but the thermometer says 20 degrees. I think they have a bad thermometer, but it also looks like it might be frosty up there. So hop up in there before they get that delivery completely blocking off the walk-in and uh, see if it's iced up or anything and go through that, okay? All right, buddy. So we have another service call here and I have another technician that's just pulling up for their walk-in freezer. And he's gonna get that dialed in and figure out what the heck is going on down there. All right, so. red wire so it matches everything else. So the, the color mismatch on the overload and the contactor is Telecommunique changed their setup and they now have those dark gray ones but there's still a mass stockpile of the overloads and stuff so you're gonna get mismatched stuff occasionally these are all in my shop right now I have a bunch of these I usually stock the 24 volt ones but apparently I was out what's going on dude I can what's up Yep. That was the day we tried to drive up and then uh, the freeway got shut down and we were all stuck. So just put it in there. Okay. Okay. All right, so that's that. Now, I need to put these guys in. That was an accident. Understanding, you know, the basic operation of these motor starters is really, really important. And knowing how to diagnose and troubleshoot them. And as soon as I get done replacing this, I'll, I'll tell you the problem we ran into and how I solved it. Um, let me get this put in now. You gotta watch out for the little uh, whiskers sometimes when the stranded wire doesn't get all the way in there, like one little wire will pop out and those will become a short or shock the crap out of someone if they're not ready for it. Okay, this guy is wired in, we are good to go. Now, um, 
there was an extra set right here of wires, 120 volt for the swamp cooler pump, because this is an evaporative cooler. So that's what I use to temporarily power the other starter. This one's bad, we'll figure that out. So what I found was these wires right here. We were finding that when we had it bypassed, the makeup air wouldn't turn on. And what we found is that there's an interlock that won't allow the makeup air to turn on unless the exhaust fans are all running. It runs through a set of contacts on each fan. If, the, if one of these starters isn't pulled in, then this makeup air contactor won't pull in. It's an interlock and it's not necessary. You need to have an interlock on a makeup air unit if it's a direct fired makeup air unit. This one is not. So there's no need for that interlock. So we are gonna bypass the interlock completely because there is no heating portion of this makeup air unit. So there's no need for it. So we need to follow these wires back and figure out how they're doing this. Um, it's right there. This one and this one need to get wire netted together. I can see it right there. So this guy and this guy are the two interlock wires. And like I said, there's no need for it because we have got um, no makeup there, no heating. What's up, dude? Uh, turning off the system. Okay. Is it iced up? The drain did, pan. Did, did you see all the water? No, I I, I just yeah, walked in. So. It's just like it looks like it's been pouring off the edge. Off okay. The edge right all right. Um, I know that we've had problems with the heater in that pan before, and I think we just replaced it. But keep that in mind as you're diagnosing. I don't know if it's a plugged up drain or what. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. All right, so everything now is wired back up minus our heater, I mean our uh, water pump. But I just want to kind of look at this guy. So we've got three phase coming in. Um, looks like we need some new fuses because someone has an incorrect fuse in here. This might've been us to get it going, but this is the wrong size. So we're going to replace those fuses and then we'll go from there. So now everything should be able to independently run without creating a problem. So let me go down and get some fuses. So I got some fuses and we're also gonna leave spare fuses for the next guy. So I got three new fuses and three extra fuses. Three new fuses, three extra fuses. I'm gonna clean up some messes.
why are the covers missing off these things? Like, I don't understand that. Someone broke them or something? Oh, there you go. There. I don't know why. And then these, I don't know which one goes to which. But I'm missing two. You should be able to figure those out. So I try to clean it up when I'm done. Make it better than when I got here. Kind of a thing. Because these things get everybody confused. So you might as well get them all cleaned up and nice and pretty. Okay, so 120 volt is safe and we got Wagos. We'll deal with that in a minute. At this point... We are ready. I'm gonna leave this one tripped. So on these guys, if you hold the stop button and slide the test window over, it'll trip the motor starter. Uh, we already have the current set right above five where it needs to be for the overload. Cause remember that was the uh, overload on the temporary one, which is fine. It worked perfect on this. What's up, man? Hinge for the bend door, what are you talking about? We already did it. Table. No, I did not take them off the conference table, 100%. No, I, I wouldn't have taken them. Um, and I wouldn't have thrown them away either from in the house. Um, and you're sure I gave them to you? Yeah, I'll look at my van. They would be in the box because I put them back in the box, I thought. You didn't already take them back to WPD? Okay, all right, well, I'll look around for them. Right. Couple little things I'm gonna clean up, like this wire right here on this guy is really messed up looking. housekeeping since got the power off anyways nice and good nice and good I like that everything else should be good I mean it's not perfect in here this guy should be good this guy should be good everything else looks like it's okay all right, let's turn on power. One, two, three, please don't blow up. Okay, so here in just a second, this, this motor starter should turn on. Okay, I'm gonna check the rotation when I push this. And it's rotating in the right direction. We're all set up in here, we are good. This right here, is in really bad shape. The whole fan is shaking off the roof. Uh, the motor looks like crap. We need to talk to him about replacing this fan, but it's running, it's in the right direction. Uh, when my technician was out here on Saturday, there was electrical shorts in here. Like he found a bunch of problems. And then I came out, helped him bypass install the temporary starter. And that's what got us going. So we are back up and running again. 24 volt starter installed. Everything's hunky dory and uh, I need to get some specs off this fan for replacement now. All right, another thing I'm noticing is this panel's sucking in, and I tried pulling it back, and the, it's got such a negative air pressure on it. I bet you anything, their metal mesh filters in here are completely plugged up, and they are, and it's not allowing air to go into the building. Uh, so we'll deal with that in a minute. As far as this guy goes, I got down in here, and I was able to clean off the data tag, to find out it has a one and a half horsepower motor, okay? 1725 RPM, 208 three phase. Uh, the pulleys right here are worn out, so we need new pulleys. Uh, we had a bunch of electrical shorts in the wiring, so I'm really skeptical of this wiring too. Because this thing's shaking, it caused all kinds of issues. 
the top of the fan's broken. Um, we're gonna hinge it. We're gonna measure the curb size. We need to know the wheel size. And the data tag off the fan is still right here. And on the old ones, it's a cube fan, 180 HP. On these old ones, they, uh, they were stamped. So the new ones, they're, oh no, they're still stamped. Yeah, they're still stamped, which is good. I'm glad Green Hex still does that. All right, so I need to get that data and then we're gonna get some cleaner and clean these metal mesh filters on this guy and see if we can get this panel pulled back out. On these ones, right here, basically if you hold the test button, it shuts the starter off. Then if you turn this guy with the screwdriver, it'll lock it into a tripped position. So let's see if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this one-handed. There we go. So now the yellow thing's there, and it's locked in a trip position. Be very careful, you don't wanna just test, you know, trust that. You should be shutting it off at the disconnect switch, but I'm not gonna be doing anything with the motor transmission or anything like that. Um, I shouldn't say transmission, the motor or uh, the power transmission system, the pulleys, the belts, or anything like that. So I feel safe enough to trust that for that. But when you are, um, you know, sticking your hands in motors and stuff, you don't want to just trust a little motor starter to keep it off, right? Uh, I guess if you wanted to, you could disconnect 24 volts or something like that to ensure it's not going to pull in. This makeup air unit is going to need a complete rebuild. Um, it's just, the pads are pretty haggard looking. It's kind of seem like they're falling out, they're disintegrating. These filters are plugs, solid. So, I'm going to clean the filters as best as I can, but they need to be replaced. You can see there's holes in them. So we're not gonna use chemical because it's just gonna disintegrate these things even more. So I'm just gonna do my best to clean them with regular water. We're gonna quote to do a complete rebuild on this makeup air unit. New filters, new cell deck pads. We'll do a complete startup. I'm not gonna bother turning the water pump on because it's 60 degrees outside right now. We're barely even hitting 70 right now. So they need a, cold, a full like startup on it. Um, yeah, it's just gonna be a mess. We need to pull the spray rails out, clean them. It's beat down, but that's it for now, so we're gonna clean these guys. All right, pulled the filters, got them measured, and also got them cleaned as best as possible. So we can go ahead and turn this guy back on. We're running. I also put a bunch of screws in this panel because these ones were all stripped out. So that's nice and secure now. So that's it. I got everything off of this guy, right? Big picture stuff here. We're not here just because we're working on this. I'm paying attention, I'm listening. I'm looking, I'm noticing, hey, you know, this panel sucked in. I'm generating work and it's legit. I'm not ripping anybody off. I'm here and the customer wants me to bring this stuff to their attention. They don't do routine maintenance right now. So this is the only chance they get to find problems before it becomes a service call. I'm already here, I'm saving them money by looking into this and finding the issues so that way I can quote it appropriately. So we're gonna put this panel back on. We're leaving the cooling off on this. I'm draining out the, the, the sump in there. And I got all the information off of this. So we got the motor information, the pulley information, the wheel information, the dimensions of the curb. Um, and then that way we can give them an appropriate quote. Now, I can also fix this fan, but I'll tell you one thing. On these older fans, if you notice, that one's taller, this one's shorter. This is from 2005. You're probably not gonna find a one and a half horsepower motor that's that small. Because of efficiency ratings, the motors have gotten a lot bigger. And on these older fans that had the, the shallow top section, it's hard to find a replacement motor that's a one and a half, because that's the size of like a three quarter motor, not a one and a half. So one and a half is gonna be a lot taller and hit the lid of the fan from my experience. But if the customer wants me to do things, I could get a taller lid made. I could put new bearings on this guy, a new shaft on this guy. If I was to walk away from this fan comfortably, I would do all new electrical conduit, uh, put a power switch on the outside of it possibly. I would do a new motor because the whole thing is just trashed. All new electrical inside, both pulleys, shaft, bearings, and a wheel. So for all that stuff, the only thing I wouldn't be changing is the housing. You might as well just change it all and be done with it, okay? But we got the motor starter back in, protecting the motor like it should. We, you know, big picture, looked at the makeup air unit, got some information off of that so we can quote it. 
And that's it. It's time to clean up my messes and uh, give the customer the keys. It's so important to understand, you know, the equipment that you're working on because in a perfect world, we have schematics and we have, you know, if this, then that statements that tell us, you know, if you turn power on, this happens or that happens. But as equipment gets older, you know, this is 20 plus year old equipment. It's going to be harder and harder to have a schematic on some of this stuff. So you need to be able to troubleshoot and understand. So there's no schematic left on that unit anymore. So I had no idea at first what those wires were, the purple wires going to those other contacts on those motor starters. But then I started thinking about it and I was like, okay, they make this in a direct fired makeup air unit to temper the air. It would make sense. So then, you know, I could see that it was a, a contact. And so I just pulled it off and bypassed it. And then the makeup air didn't come on, you know, or I, I pulled it off and then the makeup air didn't come on. And it's like, wait a minute. Okay. And then it kind of made sense what was going on. So you have to be able to step outside the box of everything, having a schematic or an explanation, you know, and you have to be able to use logic, understand why would they need an interlock for the makeup air and the exhaust fans? Well, you know, so that way you potentially don't put combustible gases down into the building without having the exhaust fans on. Makes sense, right? So it's really important that as technicians, we have the ability to dig into that stuff and troubleshoot that even if we don't have a schematic or anything. And, you know, I, it's, it's not that everybody out there is going to completely understand how exhaust fan systems work, but, you know, once you have a basic understanding, you know, it kind of starts to make sense and you can kind of, you know, use your brain and figure things out. Now, is that the only reason why there would be an interlock on that makeup air? No, you know, I mean, you know, it's possible that they don't want to overpressurize the building or different things like that. But I felt comfortable bypassing it. Okay. But again, I'm in a position where I can make decisions like that as a normal technician, you know, you need to make sure you're leaning on your upper management to make sure that's something they want you to do to get the customer going or, or so be it, whatever you have to do in this situation, I see no harm in potentially having a single exhaust fan, not work and a makeup air still running. There's no issue within that. Okay. In my opinion, in the type of buildings that I'm working in. But again, if that was a direct fired makeup air unit that had combustible gases and what I mean by direct fired is being that that's a makeup air unit in certain areas, there's laws that say you can't be blowing negative 20 degree air in the building right onto the cooks because it's kind of a safety thing, right? So they have what they call a direct fired, uh, heater basically, um, that's inside that unit. And, and it's like literally a blowtorch of flames hitting a baffle plate. And then the air runs across that baffle plate and it tempers the air. Now it's very important to understand if you have a direct fired makeup or unit, it's not gonna, it's not a heater that's going to maintain, you know, 68 degree building temp. It's literally there just to temper the air. So that way it's not as cold, you know, and that has to go into your building design. When you're designing your air conditioning system and figuring out your heat load, you have to know that you're bringing in you know, outside air and it's going to be tempered at this temperature. And there's calculations to figure out how, you know, how much heat that air coming from the outside going into the building is going to absorb based on the amount of CFMs that it's moving and stuff. Right. So you got to be careful. You don't want to just go bypassing things. Also, when it comes to bypassing the motor starter for that exhaust fan, when I had a technician out there on site, a couple key things to understand, I went out there and helped him because we had a fully functioning operating building and we didn't want to have any downtime. They were still, you know, well, when he got there, he got the exhaust fans running, but then once he got them running before he could go downstairs, they started cooking typical thing that happens in restaurants. Right? So by the time we were able to get all the parts and stuff, it was later in the morning and they're already got a full fledged kitchen going. And, you know, he basically, he got it going, but I had to go out there to help him wire in that motor starter because I didn't want him getting involved in something that was going to turn into an absolute disaster. And I try to be available for that kind of stuff if need be. Um, but I didn't feel comfortable bypassing the motor starter. Now there's times that I'll do that. Okay. There's times that I have done that in the past, but being that there was so many rubbed out wires inside that exhaust fan that he repaired and the shape of the exhaust fan, the motor, I just didn't feel comfortable, um, you know, bypassing the motor starter and leaving it running throughout the weekend. So that's why we put in a temporary motor starter with the higher voltage until I can get the right coil for that, you know, motor starter. And then we went back and got it going again. That's a decision for your service manager, your boss, whoever it may be. 
uh, to make those decisions. I don't know if that's necessarily a decision I would leave up to a customer because management that's on site at a restaurant doesn't quite understand the liability uh, and you know, it's questionable. You may be upper management, corporate management, maybe they can make a decision like that. But again, it depends on your company's policy. Okay. Always be careful. And you got to follow all local laws and regulations and different things too. You don't want fires happening or anything like that. So I was able to get the exhaust fan up and running temporarily. We went back out, we changed the motor starter. We're actually giving them a quote to replace the exhaust fan versus repairing the exhaust fan. We're going to give them both, let them make the options on what they want. Okay. Again, big picture stuff, right? We're not just there. While I was working, I happened to notice that that panel was sucked in on the make pair unit, that make pairs filters are plugged up. You know, there's just a list of things. So while I was on site, I was able to generate more work, right? By just simply looking and listening. So important when you're doing that. Looking and listening and just paying attention. Observing. I can't stress that enough. Maintenances may seem like you're doing the same thing every time, but every time you go up there, don't put on headphones. Don't listen to music. Just listen to the roof. Get used to the sounds. As long as you can do it safely without having hearing damage, don't have headphones on or anything, right? And just listen, and you'll start to become accustomed to the normal sounds of that rooftop. And then you can be up there, and you start to notice things. Pay attention, right? You're there to do a job. You're getting paid. Why not pay attention to other things going on on the roof too? I'm not saying that, you know, like for my technicians, I'm not saying that I expect them to spend 10 hours at that building. No, but just listen and say, hey, that motor's not making a, uh, a, a noise that I recognize. That's kind of a strange noise. Sounds like something's wrong. Bring that up to the manager. Have them create a work order so you can dig into the problem. That kind of stuff, right? Be thorough and look at the big picture. I really appreciate you making it to the end of the video. Thank you so very much for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Uh, also, if you want to check out my website, hvacrvideos.com, we have merchandise available on there, hats, beanies, sweatshirts, all that good stuff. This is one of the hats right here. Very signature thing is the black underbill. And then it's, it's hard to explain, but it's a see-through material, so it's very breathable. Um, I really was stressed about the black underbill because one thing that drove me nuts about hats is when you wear them and then you touch them at work, the, the underbill just gets all dirty. And it's so nice when it's black because then it isn't as noticeable, right? Um, so again, check out the website, hvacrvideos.com. A uh, couple other things. If you're interested in supporting the channel, the easiest way to support this channel is watch the videos from beginning to end. That really is the easiest way. You can also do so via PayPal, Patreon, or YouTube channel memberships. Those are all monthly commitments that you can make. There's links in the show notes of this video. And last but not least, if you check out truetechtools.com, uh, you can use my offer code Big Picture. that's one word, and on most items on their website, you'll get an 8% discount at checkout, and then I get a small commission from that. So it's another great way to help support the channel. Again, that's truetechtools.com, okay? Thank you so very much. I really do appreciate you, and uh, we will catch you on the next one.